You might have heard that turmeric is great for joint pain after cancer. Or maybe you've even been told that turmeric can cure cancer. But here is the dark truth. For some of the breast cancer survivors watching this video, turmeric can put you at an increased risk of a cancer recurrence. This is not fear mongering, this is science. If you're a breast cancer survivor, you need to know this. The information I'm sharing in this video is rarely shared by oncologists or your cancer care team. But you need to make sure you know this. And if you're currently taking turmeric, especially if you're on a drug called tamoxifen, then you need to watch. Let me break down what turmeric really does to the body, what the evidence actually says, and most importantly, who should never take it. Because while turmeric sounds natural, safe, and even healing, it can interfere with your treatment and put your recovery at risk. This could save your life. Let's dig in. So let's start with the big question. Is turmeric safe to take during or after breast cancer treatment? Turmeric is often seen as this perfect remedy. It's been used in Eastern medicine for centuries. It's anti-inflammatory, it's bright, it's golden, it's healthy looking. But what most people don't realize is that turmeric doesn't just reduce inflammation. It can interfere with how your body processes medications. And when you're going through cancer treatment, especially a carefully tailored plan like surgery, chemo, radiation, then an interaction is a serious issue. Think of your cancer treatment like a delicate recipe. Here's how I explain it to the women that I work with in the Cancer Freedom Program. Your cancer treatment is like a delicate balance. Each ingredient, your chemo, your hormone, therapy, your medications, the timing of them, it's all carefully measured. And turmeric, it's like adding a mystery spice into the recipe. It doesn't just change the flavor, it can completely ruin the dish. It can make your medications less effective. Or worse, it can increase your side effects and even make your treatment dangerous. So here's what the research shows. Let's get specific. Turmeric can stop your blood from clotting. This means if you're headed into surgery, you're at a higher risk of bleeding. You must stop turmeric at least two weeks before any operation. Turmeric can also weaken chemotherapy drugs. It's been shown to interfere with the effectiveness of doxyrubicin, cyclophosphamide, or paclitaxel. These are all very common drugs used in breast cancer treatment, and turmeric can make them all less effective. But this is the biggest issue. Turmeric stops tamoxifen from working. If you're taking tamoxifen, you cannot take turmeric. Let me explain. Tamoxifen on its own actually doesn't do very much. Your liver has to activate tamoxifen. It converts it to a compound called endoxifen. This is what actually stops hormone sensitive cancers from growing. But here's the issue. Turmeric competes for the same enzyme that tamoxifen needs to be converted to the active form. So if your body is busy breaking down turmeric, it can't actually activate tamoxifen. This means that your hormonal therapy, which you might be taking for five, seven, or even 10 years, that it's not actually doing its job. This could be quietly increasing your risk of a breast cancer recurrence. And it's not just turmeric. Other supplements can also compete for the same enzyme. Grapefruit extract, high dose green tea, even some medication used for anxiety or sleep. This is why it's so important to have someone evaluate all of the supplements and drugs you're taking. Even if it seems natural or over the counter, it can lead to a problem. Many of my clients come to me after their treatment and they're confused. They're frustrated, they're scared. They wanna make sure that the things that they're doing to boost and help with their recovery are actually working. But then I have to deliver bad news that it might actually be harming them. And unfortunately, sometimes, yes, even with the best intentions, you might be making decisions to put your progress at risk. Okay, so here is a simple rule. If you're taking tamoxifen, do not take turmeric. If you're about to have surgery, stop taking turmeric at least two weeks before. And if you're receiving chemotherapy or hormone therapy, be sure to talk to your team about it. I know this might be surprising and maybe even frustrating, especially if you're using turmeric to manage the joint pain from tamoxifen. Tamoxifen. But there's more you need to know about turmeric. What if you're on medications that aren't tamoxifen, but are similar, like anastrozole? 
letrozole or exemestane? Do you need to avoid turmeric then? And the answer is no. Aromatase inhibitors like anastrozole, letrozole, exemestane, they do not require the same activation in the body like tamoxifen does. So if you're on an aromatase inhibitor, it is safe to take turmeric. It does not have the same impact. Okay, but let's zoom out here. What is turmeric even? Turmeric is a root. It's actually part of the ginger family. It's a spice that gives curry powder that really bright gold or yellow color. It's been used for centuries in traditional medicine and specifically for its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Sounds great, right? But here is what often gets left out. The active ingredient in turmeric is curcumin and only two to 5% of turmeric actually contains curcumin. This means if you're trying to get a therapeutic dose of curcumin from taking a scoop full of turmeric, it's kind of like trying to hit your protein goal by eating lettuce. Technically it's in there, but you're gonna need to eat an entire fridge full to get enough. Even when supplement companies take turmeric and concentrate curcumin into a capsule form, it's still not very easily absorbed in the body. And that's a big problem, but this same principle principle can be applied to food with turmeric in it. Because it would be natural to think if you shouldn't take turmeric supplements, then you shouldn't eat food with turmeric. But you have to consider the dose. The dose of curcumin in a dish that's flavored with turmeric is so low. It's barely gonna have any impact on your body. But if you take it in a supplement in a concentrated higher form, then that's where it becomes concerning. So if you occasionally have a curry dish or use turmeric in your cooking, it's very low risk for interaction. We're really just focused and talking about supplement form in those higher doses. But knowing that turmeric is not readily absorbed in the body, supplement companies do try to pair it with another ingredient to increase absorption. What's often used is black pepper to increase the absorption. Okay, but what is like the, the right dose of turmeric? And honestly, there isn't one. There's no official recommendation for a dose for cancer survivors. Studies range from one to eight grams per day. The World Health Organization suggests 0.1 grams per day to be used in your cooking. This is much lower than what a lot of supplement companies are pushing. And that's assuming that you're absorbing turmeric, which most people don't. Okay, but let's talk cost. High dose curcumin supplements can run between 40 to $60 per bottle. But if the majority majority of what you're taking isn't even being absorbed in your body, then it's kind of a waste of money. Okay, but what can you do? Let's get practical here. Because if you have joint pain, then what can you use instead of turmeric? If you're dealing with joint pain, especially as a consequence of your cancer treatment, especially your hormonal treatment, then that can be very frustrating. Turmeric might feel like a tempting shortcut, but if you can't use it, then what else should you do? There are a lot of other options. So start here. Eat a diet that's high in real antioxidants blueberries, leafy greens. Include healthy fats in your diet, like wild salmon or even avocados. Keep moving. Just start with gentle exercise every day, like mobility work or stretching. Although it sounds counterintuitive, moving can actually help with the lubrication of your joints and lower your joint pain. Get enough protein. It helps to reduce inflammation and helps to rebuild your strength. Then use science-backed supplements. Supplements like omega-3 fatty acids or vitamin D. These have been proven to help reduce joint pain. Okay, so turmeric, it's not a miracle, but it's not evil either. But if you're a breast cancer survivor, especially taking tamoxifen, you deserve to know the truth because no supplement is worth jeopardizing your recovery and remission. And when it comes to staying cancer free, you need more than just good intentions. You need a strategy. You need education, clarity, and support, plus a plan that's actually proven to rebuild a cancer survivor's body. Okay, but if you're ready to take the next step in rebuilding your body and your health after cancer, here's what you need to do next. Watch this video here on the best and the worst protein powders for cancer survivors. This is your next most important decision. Click the link here and I'll see you in the video.